So let me start with you, Steve, in the next question. We have two uh, Manitoba Conservative MPs who have announced that they will not be seeking re-election. And that is a bit of a curveball, I think, uh, for the Conservatives in Manitoba. But So what do you, what's your sense overall? Um, how, will, how do you think that's going to impact the next election, and, and, and who will it be favorable for? Well, I think any time you have incumbents leave, it presents a bit of a challenge for a party. Uh, Rob Bernouche has a reputation of being a, a really well-known, good constituency guy. He reaches out and gets his name out there. His name is just cropped up on all the mailboxes in my neighborhood, so I think he's probably going to run provincially. Um, no surprise there. Joy, Joy Smith, uh, also uh, quite well-known for her work on human trafficking and, and child abuse and, and, and issues uh, like that. Um, but more and more, the local candidates don't matter as much. Politics is all centralized, and it's that central campaign and how your party is doing the polls. Uh, there's a website, 308.com, just analyzing some poll numbers uh, today. It issued a, a seat analysis, and it predicted that Winnipeg South would go liberal, uh, South Centre would return liberal, uh, Charles would. So I'm not sure I agree with all those assessments, but with the rise of Justin Trudeau, that's much more of a factor than whether it's Rod Bernouge or somebody else uh, carrying the toy bag. Great, Katie. We'll go to you and your from there. I'll just go that way. Yeah, um, I, yeah, we all kind of seem to be agreeing with each other a lot today. I, I think Steve nailed it. I, I, I think probably the, the local candidate matters a bit, but not nearly as much, obviously, as what the federal campaign does. And I don't think we have any real sense yet what the federal campaign is going to look like, what the polling numbers will be, what the campaign sort of rollouts will be yet. At least I don't, really. Um, and I, I also, I guess the only other thing I would add is I wonder if, how much we can read into the two conservatives' uh, decisions not to run again, how much can we read into that I, I fear within the conservatives, conservative party that they aren't going to do very well in the next election? Um, there's a, a head shaking there, maybe not, okay. Because um, I think that's also a question, frankly, for Pat Martin. Um, there's still this open question, um, and the longer it goes on, the longer it's, open, it's sort of, uh, it looks like Pat won't run. Um, uh, and so if Pat Martin doesn't run, what does that say about his sense of how the NDP is going to do? So I, I think that's all the Machiavellian brains like ours are kind of, that's how I'm looking at it. What does this say about this internal momentum that they're feeling? Well, I'd, I'd certainly call Pat Martin's riding the, the canary in the coal mine. Uh, if he decides not to run, what does that say in the bigger picture? Uh, Richard, what do you have to say to weigh in on this? Well, I'm, Pat Martin passionate anymore. Like, I can't remember, like, in our business, we used to be able to call Pat Martin dial a quote, right? And, and, and we wouldn't have... Um, you know, if you were really hard up for an interview and you go, oh man, I need something like in three minutes, you could dial his cell phone number and all, he, at the other end he'd go, Richard, how are you? What do you need? And you give him the topic, I can do that. And uh, so yeah, so he's, I, I think in many ways Pat's moved on. Uh, wow, if Terry Duguid were to get elected for the Liberals in, uh, in South Winnipeg. He would be, like, how many elections has he lost in a row now? I think it's about six or seven. <laughs> right, right. Um, I, I, a couple, just a couple of thoughts, because I agree that, yes, it's national politics, it means everything. Um, the events that happened in Ottawa last fall, uh, a game changer. And uh, I thought at the time, uh, and, and people that I knew in Ottawa were thinking, well, will Stephen be around for another election? Um, it looks like he is, um, and whether or not um, we see that liberal uh, rise hold in a place like Manitoba, um, the, the, there's a few intangibles. One is Mike Duffy this spring in that trial, see whether, where, where that goes. Uh, the other is, you know, what's that ballot box question? Is it going to be safety, terrorism, is it going to be economy? Uh, that all favors the Conservatives. Um, but somehow I think there's this kind of mood in the country, and certainly I get that sense here that you know it's time for a change. Um, so if that's if that's the mood, then suddenly you're going to see 
you know, you're, you're going to see three or four ridings change here. Sure. I think Mary Ann just wanted to follow up. It looks like Steve wants to say a little bit more, too. So Mary Ann, is he next? I've got a Pat Martin comment. Because um, uh, I'm one of those reporters who loves talking to Pat Martin. Because he is a cool machine. He actually does stuff. There's issues that he champions. He's always got something to say. Um, and he's often funny, and he's extremely uh, gettable. He's quick to get. But it's funny that uh, Richard said, you know, he hasn't been quite as public lately. And I remember, I guess it was last year, um, when Vic Taves was appointed to the bench, I sent Pat an email saying, I know you're going to want to comment on this. And he bent off. And I was shocked. So, uh, and there could be other sort of, you know, strategy reasons that he didn't want to comment on it, but I was quite surprised. So it even, so he has been somewhat less aggressive in your face in the last year, and I kind of miss that, but maybe that's a signal that he's, uh, yeah, he's thinking about the right again. Seriously, Steve? I think we all miss Pat Martin's Twitter feed. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I think the biggest factor in the upcoming campaign is last time the Liberals were really low in the polls, the NDP were doing quite well, especially in Quebec. Um, and, and this time we've seen a, a Liberal resurgence, they're sort of neck and neck with the Tories, so there are going to be a lot of seats that went heavily Tory last time. If the poll numbers stick where they are now, there will be much more close races, and that will be the biggest factor. Okay, so we're having a, also a transition though, uh, federally, and not only do we have more seats, but we also have boundary changes, or electoral boundary seats, uh, changes that are being made uh, in the federal election in Manitoba. And so, um, kind of in very general terms, is there a sense that's going to have a significant effect? Go ahead, Steve. Steve, Steve look at me. There you Robin go. Uh, <laughs> there are a couple of, you know, neighborhoods added here and there in Winnipeg. The big change, it's not even that big, I would say, is uh, South Center has expanded to the southwest. It now includes more of that White Ridge area. So that should favor Joyce Bateman. But again, everything comes down to the central campaign. And I think uh, the boundaries can make a difference, everything else being equal. But you look at those poll numbers, and it, it's a different campaign than last time. Okay, anyone else? Uh, Richard, no, you and Mary. No, okay, I'll leave that one. We'll leave that one just to Steve. Then. There you go, win that one.